Hello everyone, my name is Ghidorah Drizzen, and today I will be doing an unboxing of, of course, you know it, the NECA 1962 King Goji from the movie Godzilla vs. King Kong, as seen on screen. Um, I actually picked this up yesterday after a long month of searching for it, because I think it released in February, right? I'm not totally sure, but that doesn't matter now because... I have it in my hands so yeah um I must say when I went to Target and saw this I got I got pretty excited I just love the box art I love that Toho let them do this for the first time and it is the only NECA figure with a ball jointed tail and a box like this at the moment but yeah here's the front of the box the side of the box, King Kong versus Godzilla, the 65 year old, 65 years logo, 1954 to 2019. Got a nice little picture of Kong and Godzilla right there. Got um this little nice little art right here. Let's see if we can focus. All right, here we go. Um, it says King Kong versus Godzilla. Godzilla, where you went in, and that's Japanese. Um, I know that says Godzilla from years of just looking at that, but I don't know what the rest of that says. I wish I did though. Anyway, the battle of the century, which it could be, could be. Good thing we're getting a new Godzilla vs. King Kong movie in 2020. Hopefully, Godzilla will win, obviously, because he's the he's a better one. Don't at me. Featuring Heat Ray Blast, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. I like that you don't need to stand for it. It makes it look more authentic. But, yeah. Here's a... Uh, top of the box see it just 14 and up warning i'm not three years old and then neca thank you so much for making this figure thank you for making guys figures in general and yeah um and the also cool thing about this is first godzilla packaging now you can open the flap i think and you have this beautiful picture of 62 right here with in the city and um Mount Fuji in the background. That is a beautiful shot. I, I have to say. I have to hand it to you, NECA. And then you have this little box art where you get the um 6-2 figure out. I made sure I did not damage the box because I want to keep this forever. And I don't know if this can be used as a background, but if I can figure out a way to use it, I will. But yeah. Next box art, I thought I just needed recognizing. And here we have the true thing you all came for. The NECA 62. I highly recommend this. Even after only one day of play with it, it is a great figure for only $25. It is wonderful. Now, the only problem I have on mine, which is just a nitpick, honestly, is on the nails in some area, oh, let me see, like right here, you can see that it has like, well, I guess you can't see, but I'll just say it on mine, it has some like little, it could have done a little bit better on the paint job for the nails, but for $25, this is almost the perfect figure. Um, the spines look fantastic, even though they kind of they kind of did a little sloppy on the down here. But I'm not complaining because this this is a great figure. Uh, the eyes are straight and everything. Sometimes, uh, most most of the time, I'll just say, SH Monsters don't have that. But I have to give it to this one because it it has perfectly good eyes, even accurate to the box. So, uh, there you go. But, yeah, the only real problem on mine, not even a problem, uh, sometimes when I move around the head on the neck ball joint, sometimes it pops off, but it's not, it's not like you can't just pop it back in. And the tail is wonderful. It is big, bulky, and wonderful. I have to apologize because my dog is walking, and I cannot, I cannot stop that. But it is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, I wish they could have put more joints on here, like at SH Monster Arts, but this is, this is, this is really, this is okay, it was just a little nitpick, but that's all, 
this is really good for a $25 Godzilla figure. Um, of course, with all figures, they're a little rough out the box, so you will need to move them around. So, yeah, my, my legs... No, uh, the legs on my figure are a little stiff, but that's all right. It's not like I can't get them into any cool action pose like that. Um, I like um, on the camera, it looks like he's a little bit... It, they painted him in a way to make him look wet. Even though when I look at it with a real, and like me looking at it in real life, uh, or on... I think you guys know what I was trying to say, but it, it just doesn't look that... Like it came out the water. What is that noise? Oh my. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Also, the. I want to say. Not waist joint, but. I don't know what to call this joint, but it is a little stiff too on mine. And that that's okay, because you just got to work it when you get out of the box. Yeah, also the tail. Um, it uh, Mine hasn't popped out, but I feel like it might. Um, just don't, like, you can pop it back in if it does pop out, but don't, ex like, don't, like, don't do all that with it. Just make sure that you're keeping it in a nice pose. Make sure that you're not over-roughing the figure, even though it is a NECA, and it can take way more than I think SH Monsters can. But still, be careful. This is a figure that you probably want to keep forever, or if you do plan on selling it, which I don't know why you would, because Godzilla's great, um, you would want to keep it in great condition but yeah this is a pretty great figure i don't really have a problem with that at all it, it is really cool to have in my collection but now let's get on to the accessory um this is a great accessory piece i really do like it um i don't know if it's totally accurate not in the way it's shaped but the coloring i know it is neca and i know it is $25, but I feel like they could have put some blue highlight in here because I believe in the movie he does have a little blue highlight or a little bit of blue on his beam, even though this doesn't look bad. This is a great effect piece. Just, I think it should have been a, a blue instead of just, just white. But yeah, and then it's not hard plugging it in. Um, So what you have to do, Let's see. Um, in the back of his throat right here, see if I can get the camera on, um, you can see a little hole back there, and that is where you plug it in, and there is a specific way you have to put it in there, so, if you see, you can see that it's like a hole, of course you can see it's a hole, but it's shaped in a way that you have to put it in, you have to put the beam effect in this way. With um, most of the stuff going upward. And then be mindful of his teeth because I haven't heard any reports of people breaking them. But I feel like they are delicate so be careful when you're plugging this in the mouth. And all you have to do is just open the mouth all the way. Even though he has a terrible underbite. But that's it. But it's in character. And that's, what, that's why I don't. That's why I didn't put it on a nitpick list. Because I feel like. Even though his underbite is massive, it, it's in character, which I like. And then there you go. It just stays in there. The only bad thing to this, which of course would have to come at a price of this being so cool, is that this does weigh down the head, as you can see. Since mine is out the box and still a little bit stiff, it's not that bad. But I feel like if you leave this in for long periods of time, then the joints might become a lot looser. I mean, you want to be careful of that. But yeah, it just stays in. You can pose any type of way like... Yeah. It is pretty, pretty cool. And now I'm going to go over some of the articulation. Um, head moves side to side. Um, mouth opens and closes. The neck moves side to side. Up, down, everywhere you want it to go. The arms on mine are still stiff, so you have to so I have to be careful, but I'm pretty sure they can go with full 360. The um arms move and the inside of the hands move, which means you'll be able to that's right. Got him. 